If you like eggnog, you are going to love this eggnog pie. It's creamy. It's not too sweet. It's just right for this time of the holidays. It's got easy ingredients. We're just going to take two cups of just regular eggnog. This is Danny's favorite eggnog. It's a uh, Prairie Farms. Uh, it's not the custard, it's just regular eggnog. And we're going to take one cup of just whole milk. And this, this is a 4.6 box of the Cook and Serve Vanilla Pudding. Not the instant, but the Cook and Serve. The big box. And we're just going to add that to our pot. And we're going to make this just like we're making just a regular box of cook and serve vanilla pudding. But you've added the eggnog to it. So using the eggnog and the vanilla pudding, it just makes it so creamy and it's not too sweet. So we're gonna turn our burner on to about medium heat. And we're going to cook this just till it starts to thicken. And once it starts to thicken, we'll take it off the heat and add our vanilla and a little bit of cinnamon. So you can see it's starting to thicken up now. And I'll just keep stirring it. And once it gets to that, uh, you see how that's getting thick there. So at that point like that, do you want to turn your burner off? And we're going to put a teaspoon of vanilla. Now you can put a teaspoon of rum uh, extract if you want to. I just like to use the vanilla because the eggnog already has rum in it has a little bit of um, rum flavoring, so I just thought vanilla would be better. And I'm going to put about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon instead of nutmeg because your eggnog already has a little bit of nutmeg in it. And too much nutmeg for me can just be a little bit overpowering. So I think just a little bit of cinnamon would be good. So this is really starting to thicken up good. So once we take this off the heat and let it cool down, then we'll put it in our cold, already baked pie crust. So here's our baked pie crust. And this is a, a nine inch deep dish. And we're just gonna add our eggnog filling to it. And this will set up, it will thicken up and set up because we will be putting it in the refrigerator to chill. And the main reason that you want to use a deep dish is because you're going to put a pretty good layer of whipped topping on top. So you want to give it quite a bit of room. So if you don't use a deep dish, you won't you get as nut you know as much whipped cream on top, but that's just up to you. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to put whipped cream on top. You can just have your eggnog pie and it'll be just as good. But we really love our whipped topping. It just really, really, really sets it off. So we're gonna put this in the refrigerator to chill for a couple hours. Before we put it in there, I almost forgot that we need to put a little bit of plastic wrap on top and just kind of push it down on top. And what that's going to do is keep from your, your custard, your pie filling, getting a, a skin on top. So off to the refrigerator we go. 
Now our pie has been chilling for a couple of hours and it's set up good. So now we're going to make our whipped topping. I've got 16 ounces of heavy cream in here. And I'm just going to beat it till it starts to get, sets up a little bit. Now you can use um, Cool Whip, but I prefer whip topping. Now it's starting to set up, so I'm going to start putting a little bit of confectioner sugar in it. A tablespoon at a time. And that's just to sweeten your, your whip topping up. You can make it as sweet as you want. Usually about six tablespoons is what I put in this amount of whipped topping. But taste it as you go to see if the sweetness suits you. And I'm going to taste it. And it might need just a little bit more sugar, but it also needs its vanilla too. So we're going to put about a teaspoon of vanilla in here, or you could use a teaspoon of rum extract. I know in a lot of the eggnog nog pie recipes, they use rum extract in it, and uh, I just soon use vanilla, but that's your option if you want to use the rum extract. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some more confectioner sugar in this. It just, uh, it was still just a little bit bland. And I will have the recipe for this down in the description box too below my video with the recipe for the, for the pie. And I'll have the recipe for making the whipped topping too. So it's pretty much done now. I'm going to get my beaters off. And we're going to start putting our whipped topping on it. And I like to put a pretty good layer on there. And like I said, if you want to use Cool Whip, you just go right ahead. It'll be good. I just prefer whipped topping myself. Now, I do use Cool Whip for a lot of different recipes, especially recipes that are, you know, fast recipes that you throw together. And in fact, I've got several um, recipes that call for Cool Whip. But something like this, I prefer, since I have some heavy cream, just go ahead and make some whipped topping. Now, there is an eggnog pie recipe that uses instant vanilla pudding instead of the cook and serve. I tend to like this one better. I don't know why, it just tastes a little better. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more of this whipped topping on here. This pie sets up really, really good too. It cuts really pretty. It's thick, sets up good. You don't have any trouble serving this pie. It always does real, real well. Now, I'm not real good at making my pies real pretty. They taste good, but they're not always the prettiest, but I do the, <laughs> the best I can. But we're fixing to cut into this pie anyways. And you know, it seems like the first cut out of a pie is always the ugliest cut. The second one looks a little bit better, and by the third cut, mm, you're doing really good. I'm going to take just a little bit of cinnamon, and I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit on top. You don't want to put too much because it overpowers, and you know, cinnamon's bitter. So, I'm going to clean this mess up, and then we'll cut our pie. I 
I know Mr. Brown's wanting to taste it. He loves his eggnog. He loves Prairie Farm regular eggnog. Not the custard, but the regular. Y'all see how pretty that sets up? Pretty pie, and it tastes wonderful. I hope y'all try this recipe. I think y'all are going to love it and add it to your Christmas holidays. So let's go on to our next recipe. I'm going to show y'all one of my favorite all-time Christmas punches. And it starts with several different juices. You can even serve this Christmas morning with Christmas breakfast. It's so good. And we're going to start with two cups of orange juice, your favorite orange juice. And we're going to put in two cups of cranberry juice. And the one reason I really enjoy this punch is, is because it's not overly sweet. And now we're going to put in one cup of pineapple juice. Now I'm making this in my gallon jug because I want to show y'all how y'all can make it in a gallon jug, but I'm not going to be making that big of a, uh, that much punch today. I'm just going to make enough for me and Mr. Brown to, to drink, but on Christmas day, I will fill this jug up uh, enough. I'll do it three times the recipe. Now I'm going to put one cup of Sprite or you can use one cup of ginger ale, whichever one you prefer. I'm going to put a cup of Sprite. I mean, that's what I bought. I don't keep Sprite. We don't drink it, but my grandkids do. So I thought I'd go ahead and just put a cup of Sprite instead of ginger ale in it. Um, if it was mainly adults, I'd put ginger ale in it. But the grandkids really like Sprite. So that's all there is to that punch. And it's so refreshing and so delicious. And I'm just going to stir this up and uh, I'm going to put it into a smaller container since I'm just making one recipe of it. But to fill this jug up and to make a big thing, a punch for a crowd, you would triple this recipe. And I'll put the recipe down below in my information box. But it's a pretty simple recipe. And if you triple it, it will fill this jug up. But I'm just making enough for us to drink right now. And I'll just switch it over to my regular size pitcher. And then I'll put it in the refrigerator and let it chill. So once you make the triple recipe and put it in this jug, You'll put the lid on it and you'll put it in the refrigerator. I would make it the day before and chill it really good. But I'm just going to put mine in the refrigerator and we'll be drinking on it off and on. And I'm going to show you something else that I like today. Now I've washed this lemon and this orange. I scrubbed them, washed them really good. I like to make um, I like to take some fruit, different fruits and make fruit ice cubes. Now, some people will take fruit and they'll put them in an ice cube tray and pour water around them. I don't do that. I just take my fruit and the fruit I'm going to use this time will be lemons and oranges because that's what I have. And I'm going to put take some of the seeds out. But I love to freeze fruit. But what I do is I take my fruit and I'm just going to kind of roll it in a little bit of sugar and I'm going to place it on my little sheet pan here and then I'm going to stick it in the freezer 
and I want them to freeze solid. And what you do is you, you just use these in your punch. You put one or two or however many pieces of fruit you want in there in your chilled punch into the glasses, every, you know, whenever you pour it or if you're going to put it in a punch bowl. That little bit of sugar will get into your punch and kind of sweeten it up a little bit. Or if whoever gets a couple pieces of fruit with their punch, they can eat the fruit. But I like doing it this way better than I do in ice cube trays with the water because the water seems to dilute your, your punch down just a little bit. And this right here just seems to give it a really good taste. Plus you can eat the fruit. Now, if you're making a, a full batch, a triple batch of your punch, you're gonna want more fruit, of course. So you do as much fruit as you want the day before. Just do this, roll it in your sugar, put it on your trays, put it in the freezer, and let them freeze overnight. Let them get good and hard. And then, uh, if you want to, you can take them out and throw them in a baggie or something to get ready to use them. Or just use them on the, leave them on the tray until you get ready to use them. But they're a lot of fun, and they make that punch taste just that much better. And it makes them look pretty, too. So this is just something that uh, I've always done when I made my, fr my fruit punches. It's kind of like when you take grapes and roll them in sugar and uh, egg whites and stuff and freeze them. But there's no egg whites on this. This is just pure fruit and sugar frozen solid to make fruit ice cubes. It's a good idea and it really works. It makes that punch taste really good. So, it's been a few hours and I am thirsty and I cannot wait to try this punch. Now, I didn't leave my fruit out there as long as I wanted to, but they are getting frozen. I'm gonna put me a piece of orange and a piece of lemon in there. I can't wait to taste this. You see how pretty that makes that glass look? This punch is so, so refreshing. It is so good. And it's just not overly sweet. Like I said, you can drink this for breakfast. So good. Y'all have to try it. It's one of my favorites. So join me while I make my grandkids' favorite fudge. I'm going to be using a big, heavy pot. I got six cups of sugar. I got a can of evaporating milk. And I've got one and a half cups of butter. Now I've got a recipe making old-fashioned fudge. But this recipe is just, it's one of the grandkids' favorites. My favorite is the old-fashioned fudge. We're just gonna pour our can of evaporated milk in our pot and our six cups of sugar. And now we're gonna put our cup and a half of butter in here. I grew up on the old-fashioned Hershey fudge. And I do like this too. It is good. It's good creamy fudge. And it's just one that I make every year for the kids and grandkids. And I'm just going to stir this around. And I'm going to let my butter melt. And let it all get incorporated. This is really a, an easy recipe. It just the only it just takes a little bit of time. Once you get your butter melted and um, it comes up to a good boil, I mean, it's going to take about 10 minutes for it to boil, and then you're going to be ready to, to pour it in your, your dish. 
So you can see that it's starting to come to a boil. You can see around the edge it's starting to boil. But we want it to come to a good rolling boil. So we're just going to keep stirring it. I'm not going to leave it. I'm going to stand here and keep stirring it. Now it's come to a good rolling boil. You can see the difference now. So now I'm going to time it and I want it to boil like this for 10 minutes and I'm going to stand here and keep stirring it. So it's been boiling for 10 minutes and I'm going to take it off the heat now. And I've got my 9 by 13 pan over here and I've got parchment paper in it and it's buttered. I'm going to take a whole bag of milk chocolate chips. You can use semi-sweet if you want to. A whole bag. And I'm going to use a whole bag of Reese's peanut butter chips too. So you got your your chocolate and your peanut butter. One bag of each. And we just want them to melt, to start melting in that hot mixture. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my seven ounces of marshmallow cream and get it in there so it can start melting too. Now I always spray my spatula with a little bit of, I've got some oil, olive oil spray and that keeps it from sticking so bad that marshmallow cream on my spatula. So that's working pretty good. It's hard to get all of it out of there, but you just try your best. But the main thing is you really want to get this stirring. You really want to get them chips and chocolate chips and peanut butter chips melted. So you're going to have to stir, stir, stir. And get all that incorporated. I can smell them peanut butter chips. They smell so good. I'm going to pour about a cup of chopped pecans in there. Uh, nuts is optional. I don't, I don't put too many, but I do like to put a few. You put walnuts if you want to. And you just keep stirring and stirring and stirring. It takes just a little while to get all that marshmallow cream incorporated. That mixture is really hot when you put them chocolate chips and that marshmallow cream in there and, and just it goes to melting all them chips and all that marshmallow cream it just takes it just a couple of minutes but you really got to stir it hard really stir it good to get all incorporated and um, my 9 by 13 pan over here beside me does have a piece of parchment paper in it that's buttered good. You can do that or you can put it on aluminum foil. Now Mr. Brown's going to help me pour this fudge in this pan. I just I couldn't do it by myself without getting it everywhere. Plus you need somebody to kind of scrape your pan down. And you can see how easily it pours into your dish. I'm going to try to get this scraped down as good as I can. It's not going to be perfect because I know Mr. Brown. He's, uh, he's eyeballing that and he's wanting to be able to scrape this pan and eat that hot fudge while it's still warm. And I don't blame him. So I may just leave him a little bit since he helped me. There you go, Mr. Brown. It's all yours. Okay, we got it in our pan now, and now it's got to cool. It'll take most of the day for it to cool here on the counter. Or you can put it in a cool area, and it'll cool a lot faster and set up. But just don't put this hot pan in a cold refrigerator. That's not a good idea. Okay, it has been sitting in a cool room all day long. In fact, at one point I had it on the back porch. 
or you can put it in your refrigerator either way it sets up really good I'm just gonna pull back my parchment paper and you see how it's set up good and we're just gonna start cutting pieces I always have a pretty easy time cutting this fudge it does really good and any time during the holidays when I'm making candy, I always find me a cool place in the house to set my candy. And sometimes it's out on the back porch. And believe me, today has been a cold day. But once this fudge sets up, it stays set up. And it's a very good one to give as gifts. <clears throat> now some of this I'm going to cut up. And um, I'm going to store in my dish here. I'll cover it up and I'll store it either probably in the refrigerator. And I'll just take out what I need when I need it. We'll snack on it a little bit, but Christmas Day I'll get some out and I'll put it on a platter. And some of it I'm going to give away to the kids. And they can take it home with them. It's a real good recipe. Not only does it taste good, but it's good to give as gifts. I know my old fashioned Hershey um, fudge recipe that a lot of people my age and older remember this recipe and they just love the recipe. Um, it's just good old fashioned fudge the way it should be. A lot of people have a lot of trouble with it setting up. This fudge recipe right here, it sets up every time. The old fashioned fudge recipe, you got to hold your mouth just right and hope for a good day that it's gonna set up. But if it sets up, it's the best fudge you ever ate. I hope y'all try this recipe. My kids and grandkids love this fudge. I hope y'all love all three of my recipes and try them. If you don't, put them on your list for next year. Or make them for the New Year Eve Chris, uh, New Year Eve party that you're going to have, maybe. Or just make them just for fun, because they're really good recipes. Guys, we want to wish y'all a very Merry Christmas, a safe Christmas. Just be with your family and enjoy them. Have a good meal. Love each other. We're so happy that we have y'all as our friends and our family. God bless everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Mr. Brown will be reading from the Bible. God bless.